Hello and welcome to Dr. VGP Talk Show. Hello and welcome to Dr. VGP Talk Show that reaches 42 million households, including 2 million in Chicago land. Winners don't do different things, but they do things differently. Our guest in this episode of Dr. VGP Talk Show is the transforming journey of a high school teacher to an economic development coordinator for the city of Chicago, to a five-term alderman for the city of Chicago, who rose to head the nation's second most populous county, the Cook County Board of Commissioners. Meet the Iron Lady of America, Tony Prackwinkle, the president of Cook County Board of Commissioners. Tony Prackwinkle is the 35th president of the Cook County Board of Commissioners, and she oversees the nation's largest criminal justice system, the nation's largest public health and hospital system, and also she is the president of Forest Preserve District, which is one of the largest forest preserves in the country, where 62 million visitors visit annually. Meet the dynamic, visionary, foresighted leader who's proven to transform, reform, and perform the second largest county in the whole of United States of America. President Tony Preckwinkle, the Iron Woman of America, is the champion of COVID relief efforts, a champion of physical responsibility, a champion of economic development, a champion of criminal justice, a champion of the healthcare system, and a champion of sustainability and champion of progress, a people's champion, Tony Preckwinkle. to Dr. VGP talk show that reaches 42 million households, including 2 million in Chicago land. We have with us today, the dynamic president of Cook County Board of Commissioners, Tony Prattwinkle, who I often refer to as the Iron Woman of America. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. VJ. We're so delighted to be here in your office in Chicago downtown at 180 North Clark Street. And thank you for being a busy schedule joining us today. You know, Cook County, Madam President Tony Preckwinkle is the 35th president of the Cook County Board of Commissioners. It's the nation's second most populous county. And as president, Tony Preckwinkle oversees one of the nation's largest public health and hospital systems, one of the largest criminal justice systems. And she also dons the responsibility as president of the Cook County Forest Preserve District, True enough. which has 62 million visitors every year. Having said that, uh, President Tony Preckwinkle, tell us about your growing up years at St. Paul, Minnesota. <laughs> well, um, my family has been in Minnesota for several generations. Um, I, I went to public schools in St. Paul, Minnesota, and when I was looking for colleges, uh, a friend had told me about the University of Chicago. So I decided, uh, never having been there, uh, to come there to go to school. And uh, I always say that I learned to read carefully, to write clearly, and think critically, and that's all you can expect of a college education. So... <laughs> 
That's good. Interestingly, after your degree from the University of Chicago, you had been a high school history teacher for 10 years in Chicagoland. You know, during my high school days, I was the secretary of the History Geography Club okay. for three years. So history is a fascinating subject. Tell us what you loved most during your 10 year spell as a history teacher. Well, one of the wonderful things about teaching is the connection to young people. Um, they have so much energy and enthusiasm uh, for life uh, and for learning. And I, I really enjoyed teaching history because I love history. <laughs> Clearly, if you were if you were president of the History of Geography Club, you yes. do too. Um, but you know, I, I've I've always been interested in American history. Uh, you know, the history of our own country and African American history. And that's what I what I taught for uh, for 10 years. And I always say that's how I started my working life as a as a classroom teacher. That's very interesting. And I think African American history has often not been dwelt with importance in our school textbooks and in college history. Of course, we celebrate February as the Black History Month. We learn every year something new. Uh, I think that's something which we should all start enlightening ourselves on it. Now, you, after your 10 year stint as a history high school teacher in most of Chicagoland schools, which you had taught, you joined the city of Chicago as the economic development coordinator. Right. I was a munchkin in, in the Department of Economic Development, but I, I loved it. I learned a lot about the importance of industrial sectors. We did a lot of work around steel. Uh, at that time, which is more than 40 years ago now, um, Chicago was still in the uh, manufacturing of steel business. Um, we've kind of moved away from those kind of plants, but we still do a lot of metalworking. So everything from, you know, nails and springs uh, to machinery, you know, there's a big Ford plant on the southeast side of Chicago that employs 6,000 people. Yes. Um, so we, we have a lot of metalworking industries uh, in the Chicago land region. Uh, so we did a lot of work around that. I, I did some work around apparel. Um, at that time, we were still doing uh, apparel. We're still in the apparel industry in Chicagoland, which there really isn't anymore. Um, but I, I learned a lot about the importance of, as I said, not just industrial sectors, but entrepreneurs to our economy. That, that's very, very much needed. And I see that you've implemented that in your role for, since 2010 as the Cook County President Board of Commissioners. I would, you also had the distinction for near, being a five-term five alderman from the fourth ward. For nearly 19 years, you were the city, alder, city of Chicago alderman. Tell us what was, one, what was the biggest challenge you faced during those 19 years of city of Chicago uh, being an alder woman for the fourth ward? Well, first of all, I have to say that I love being alderman. Uh, it's a great job. Um, you can do a lot for the people in your community. You're kind of the mayor of a small town. Mm -hmm. uh, people come to you. They want to get their kids into a good school. They want to find employment. They need decent housing. So it isn't just potholes and, uh, you know, street lights out. It's kind of everything, the whole continuum of, of services. And I, and I really like the fact that I, I got to know the people that I served. Um, and, I, and what I usually say about this job is I can help a lot more people, but I don't know them. And so I don't have the same personal connection. Kind of first-hand approach to the people. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not the same hands-on job that it is being alderman. And I really, I really enjoyed that. We did a lot of work in kind of redeveloping some of the communities outside of the neighborhood which I lived. I live in Hyde Park and, and South Kenwood. Um, and the ward moved progressively north, but it always included Grand Boulevard to the west and then North Kenwood, Oakland, Douglas, uh, and then into the South Loop um, in, in my later years. So the ward expanded to the north, uh, but my concerns kind of moved north uh, with the expansion of the ward to rebuild the communities that have been struggling for so long with disinvestment and um, fires and criminal activity. Um, and we did a lot of work in, in rebuilding the neighborhoods and trying to do it in a mixed income way. Excellent. And I think your legacy still continues in Fourth Ward, which has been bustling with economic activity. As the dynamic president of the Cook County Board of Commissioners, Tony, you have transformed the county government through increased fiscal responsibility, through transparency and improved services. And you have very creatively used the Affordable Care Act to create a new program, County Care, which today is giving quality care 
to nearly half a million people. Tell us how did you go about that and it's a much needed Nobel program and how did you create that? Well, I have to give credit to the person who was head of our health and hospital system at the time, Dr. Raju. Dr. Raju came to us from the New York system uh, and headed up our system for two or three years at about the time that President Obama passed the Affordable Care Act. And one part of it was allowing pu public hospitals to create their own Medicaid expansion program. So Medicaid is the program for people 19 to 64, just as Medicare is the program for people 65 and over um, that get federal support for their health care. So public hospitals were allowed to create their own Medicaid expansion program to provide care for the residents in their uh, communities. So we applied for it on behalf of Cook County Health, the County Health and Hospital System. Um, and again, at doctors, Dr. Raju's uh, insistence, because they had they had started up the program in New York. And then when he came here and found that we weren't participants, he said, that's the first thing we have to do. Um, and now, as you say, uh, 450,000 people, almost half a million people, are part of our Medicaid expansion program, which is called County Care. And they can get care anywhere they want, not just in our institutions, not just at Stroger or Provident, our hospitals or any of our clinics across the county. They can go anywhere with their with their county care card. See, I think your visionary leadership, your far-sighted approach has developed county care to be a very noble program, much needed program here in the Cook County. Also, you are credited with turning around for the first time in the Cook County Hospital's health history of 183 years, they were in a deficit and you turned it around and made them come blue. Now, how did that happen? Well, I have to, I have to credit Israel Rocha, who's our leader of our health and hospital system now. Dr. Raju, you know, bless him, helped us to understand that we really needed to take advantage of the Affordable Care Act opportunities and create county care, our Medicaid expansion program. And Israel Roach has been the leader of our health and hospital system since December of 2020. Uh, he came here just as we were giving out the first vaccines to deal with the pandemic. And we're grateful for his leadership over the last three years. Um, our health and hospital system is half of our budget. We have an eight billion plus budget, almost nine billion dollar budget now. Half of it is health care. Half wow, of it. Wow, income. Yes. Wow, that's a big number. What, uh, yeah. Big number. And uh, and Dr. Rocha has provided uh, Israel Rocha has provided the leadership uh, for health and hospital system for the last three years, and I'm I'm very grateful to him. We um, last year uh, were in the in the black for the first time. Um, Congratulations. That's a great achievement. <laughs> Thank Only you can do it. Only the Iron <laughs> Woman of America, for the first time in the 180 years history, has made the Cook County Hospital budget be in the black. Mm. Well, you know, I, I am I am grateful to Israel Rocha and his team. They've done a great job. Yeah. You know, leveraging your 30 years of political experience, President Tony Preckwinkle, you solved more than the 2.87 billion in def budget deficits. And you've also provided the supplemental pension payments of nearly two billion. Isn't that historic? Uh, please comment on it. Sure, well, we, when I came into office, we had a half a billion dollar budget deficit and I had to work with all the separately elected officials uh, to try to close that $487 million gap. Wow. So that, that's the way we started. Uh, we had our work cut out from us from the, for the very beginning. Um, so I'm really grateful to our financial uh, teams, Tarek Malhans, Ivan Samstein, Amar Ritsky, and now Tanya Anthony for their leadership uh, of our financial um, our, our financial offices. But I, you know, I have to say, um, I'm also grateful to, to all of the folks uh, who work for the county for their efforts to try to help us um, figure out how to run government more efficiently. Uh, and still deliver the programs that uh, that people want and need. So um, you're right. For the first time, we had a we had a uh, we were in the black last year for our health and hospital system. But you know, it's very hard to run a public hospital system that makes money or breaks even because we provide so much charity care. Absolutely, absolutely. We have 64 hospitals in Cook County, and our two hospitals, Stroger Hospital and Provident Hospital, provide half 90. the charity. Yeah, they provide. 
more than half of the charity care. And there are 64 hospitals, there are two of us, and we provide half the charity And care. it's one of the most best teaching hospitals. It also is one of the greatest trauma centers, Cook County Hospital. It's lots of first, it's a, it's a tertiary center of learning. Right. Um, and, and I just have to be honest, it has been a... Um, a place where people who are immigrants to this country have been able to get free access, free health care, access, free health care. And absolutely. so um, training. So we've we've foreign medical residence program, medical the, residents. Uh, it's in the North most sought after hospital for residency program for foreign medical graduates or even the country's national medical graduates. Right. And here the reason is that they see such a broad spectrum of patients of patients. So it's great preparation for um, your medical profession because you get to see set, such a breadth of, of patient challenges, you know? No, we are very fortunate to have you at the right time uh, guiding the, not only the healthcare, it was during your presidentship that you were the first one to think and create a division for economic development, which has never been there in the county system. How could you tell us what made you create the County Bureau of Economic Development? Well, you know, after I taught for those 10 years, I, I bounced around and did a bunch of different things. One of the things I did for three years was work for the city of Chicago's Department of Economic Development. And I spoke earlier about the work we did around industrial sectors. Manufacturing. Manufacturing. Steel. You know, yeah, steel and apparel. Um, but the support, we, we tried to figure out how to, we could provide for entrepreneurs. And so when I came to the county, I said, you know, I, I want to talk to all the bureau chiefs. Where is the bureau chief of economic development? And of course, there wasn't one. So we created a bureau of economic development to put together capital planning, building and zoning, community development which had been separate, you know, kind Entity. of siloed entities, right? And But I said, we have to have a, a, a holistic, comprehensive plan for economic development in our county, and that means that everybody has to work together. We can't have these disparate units out here. So we created a Bureau of Economic Development. Having laid that foundation, and do you see that that uh, create Bureau of Economic Development should take go one step further and engage becoming an international trade, creating more job opportunities, which the county needs in the south part of the county too. You know, getting industrial islands, uh, workplace development programs in place to create jobs and engaging and inviting foreign countries to have trade centers here in your county. Right. Um, one of the things we're trying to do is encourage foreign direct investment. They call it FDI. Correct. Um, and that means that companies that are owned by um, folks outside the United States want to come here and invest to, to produce uh, goods or services. And so we, that's been one of our priorities to try to ramp up the foreign direct investment in Cook County. There's already a considerable amount, um, but we want to expand that. That's that's wonderful to hear. Great news that you're in the right direction with the whole with the digitalization of the whole world and all the different foreign countries coming together and having uh, maybe you should have a Cook County summit on FDI <laughs> under your presidentship and we'd love to collaborate with you on that. All right. Yeah. And you know we've heard uh, President Tony Preckwinkle the Cook County Land Bank. How does it work? Could you tell us what it is about the Cook County Land Bank? Well, this is an idea that was brought to me by uh, Commissioner Bridget Gaynor. Uh, this is something that was another started. one which you initiated. Yeah. Wow, one more. So, okay. uh, so she had heard about uh, this work in Michigan, uh -huh. uh, and uh, we agreed to work with her on this. So we created a Cook County Land Bank. Um, we go into the tax sales. Uh, you may be aware that if people don't pay their property taxes, the, the county periodically has tax sales to sell the taxes. Um, we went to the tax sale to get properties to have a kind of pool of properties that we could develop. So instead of uh, parceling them out to um, individual tax buyers, they came into the possession of a, of a government entity, uh, the County Land Bank. And we have now hundreds of, of parcels, both in the city and the suburbs, that are available for development. And so uh, we seek out community-based uh, developers and larger members of the development community to help us, you know, rebuild some of the neighborhoods and, and cities, cities, towns, and villages in the suburbs that have been struggling. That's a very interesting and very significant program. And how would somebody who wants to access that? They, you could go to the Cook County. Is there a number or an office they can reach at? Um, let me see. Um, 
cookcountyil.gov is our website. Okay. So it's um, Cook County IL for Illinois dot gov. Okay. Great. Okay. So and if you if you go to that website and you know punch in um, Cook County Land Bank at CCLB, you'll find information. Great. Yeah. See, seeing you as a president in action reminds me of a biblical verse. I was reading this morning, actually, I was reading Luke chapter six, you know, in my daily reading, I read a chapter a day. And then it says in one of the verses, a good man out of the of good treasure of his heart, bring it forth that which is good. And that I said, oh my God, that's the verse given to me. And I'm going to interview President Tony Preckwinkle. Maybe that's the verse God is telling me to tell you. So I'm sharing it on the show here. You have been a trailblazer. So many innovative accomplishments you have made and you have walked the talk and you have really set your footprints today in all the levels of governance. Your former chief of staff, Robin Kelly, is now a U.S. congressman. Another former chief of staff, Kim Fox, is today is the state attorney. Right. And one of your former Cook County Board of Commissioners, who you nurtured, uh, Brandon Johnson, is the newly elected made history prayer, mayor of the city of mayor Chicago. Of Chicago. So it's Tony all over the place, I could say. I mean, you have silently, steadfastly worked to make it happen. And that's what a leader with far-sight visionary zeal does. It's not about yourself. You're planted, you're nurturing other leaders to come in. I mean, that's a great, great, great to have, which very few leaders have had. So having said that, what is your advice to the young people who want to get into politics? Well, first of all, I should say, you know, I was a teacher. And so if you're a teacher, that's your job, right? To nurture and support young absolutely, people. Absolutely, absolutely. And when I got into a position where I could be helpful to other people, younger people coming up in the profession, I've tried to do that. You know, I always say, if you're interested in public life, um, every two years in this country, we have elections. <laughs> <laughs> and there's always at least one person on the ballot you might want to work for. And so, you know, volunteering in a political campaign is a good way to get a sense of what that whole universe is like. Um, and people, of course, kind of move back and forth sometimes between campaigns and government. Um, but just being involved in a campaign kind of gives you a sense of that world. Um, and you can also seek out internships in government, which will give you a chance to see what the governing side is like as opposed to the political side. <laughs> Friends, you just heard from the Iron Lady of America, the secret recipe, those of y'all who want to follow in her footsteps. And she is a trailblazer, accomplished, distinguished leader, an action packed person. And she is, you also are the Cook County Democratic Party president. Chair, yeah. Chair for the party. Now, with I would like to sh have you share your insight into the upcoming presidential election. Uh, the first part of the question. Second part is, will the Democrats regain the control of the House in 2025? Let's start with that one. Yeah. Um, you and I were both at an event earlier this week yes. and heard from uh, the the executive director of the DCCC, the Democratic yes. Congressional uh, Committee. And, you know, we have five seats that exactly. we have to gain. Mm -hmm. uh, and she focused on New York and California, both heavily Democratic states, where uh, she anticipated we might be able to pick up additional Democratic seats. Uh, but we've got to defend the ones we have as well, so that there's, there's work to do all across the country. But she focused on gaining seats maybe in California and New York. So that's the first thing. Um, and although President Biden has been able to do a great deal, the American Rescue Plan Act, the infrastructure bill, the CHIP bill to, to encourage um, manufacture within the United States of the chips that are in everything, the microchips that are in everything, um, you know, our cars, our phones, our, our cameras, um, and our appliances. Um, all of that, you know, I think is an incredible accomplishment. And and uh, what I've said to President Biden when I've had a chance to talk to him is a lot of good work has been done. Uh, we need to do a better job of of messaging it, getting the word out to people right. of all the ways in which the president has been trying to support the people and local governments of our country. You just heard it from the Cook County Democratic Party chair. There are five seats which the Democrats are going all out to, to regain control of the House. President Tony Preckwinkle mentioned President Biden's transforming three programs he has initiated across America, and they are hoping to keep the presidency and regain the control of the House. That's with, the plan. <laughs> that's, and with you at the helm of it, I'm sure the Cook County, being one of the nation's largest populous county, 
would definitely spearhead that in that direction. Madam President Tony Preckwinkle, if you're given a chance to take three people for dinner, they could be present or not here, but who would the three people be? Dead or alive, is that what you Dead or alive, yeah, I didn't want to say it just like that, but <laughs> that's what, yeah, go ahead. You know, I have a picture on my wall of President Lincoln. Um, and in my mind, he's the greatest president that we've ever had. Um, now, partly my view of the world is um, impacted by the fact that many of our early presidents were slaveholders. Mm -hmm. And so that makes them problematic characters in my mind. Um, but I surely would like the opportunity to uh, to meet with President Lincoln. Like it. Um, I'm a big fan of a more recent uh, political leader, uh, Barbara Jordan. Barbara Jordan was a member of Congress from Texas, and she was part of the House Judiciary Committee when um, they were considering articles of impeachment for for um, Richard Nixon. And I was teaching history at the time. And I just remember um, going home at night, listening to the um, replays of the congressional hearings, and then talking to my students with the, about it the next day. It was a it was a great opportunity for them to kind of see how democracy works, especially when there were there challenges, right? Um, so that's the second one. And who would be the third one? That's a little harder for me. Um, you know, I, I've been a big fan of two people, in, historical figures in the African-American community. One is Sojourner Truth, who was an abolitionist who traveled around the country uh, talking about uh, the evils of slavery. Mm -hmm. and the other, of course, was Harriet Tubman. There's been a recent movie about uh, Harriet Tubman, which you may have seen, um, in which, you know, her life is portrayed. But she was a a person who not only escaped slavery herself, but went back numerous times to bring back family and friends uh, to freedom. Um, and that's just an amazing, an amazing, encouraging story. Thank you so much for sharing the three of our heroes, the three people, Tony Preckwinkle would like. One, of course, is President Abraham Lincoln, Congresswoman Barbara Jordan, and the other two was one is the Speaker Truth. Sojourner Truth. Sojourner Truth. And Harriet Tubman. Harriet Tubman. I mean, here there's a movie about one of them. Harriet quite, Tubman. Harriet Tubman, yeah. Re re quite recently. Uh, President Tony Preckwinkle, how would you describe yourself in three words? Three adjectives to describe you or your personality. <laughs> Um, you know, I've tried to be honest with the people that I've served about not only the challenges we face, but what we're going to try to do to address those challenges. So, I, you know, honesty. Um, you know, I've I've made no bones about the fact that th this is a, a terribly um, uh, inequitable country in lots of ways. They're just uh, broad inequities, and I've tried to address inequity in the work we've done. So. Um, and I've tried to be uh, accountable to the people that I've served. So uh, I guess I'd say those three things. <laughs> Great. You know, we just heard, I think yesterday was the historic, devastating, in my opinion, Supreme Court verdict on affirmative action. Right. And how do you react to it first? And the affirmative action was for the college and the Ivy League school colleges, is what, what I understand. But I'm wondering if that's going to also spread into affirmative action into the corporates and economic. Uh, yeah, that, that's hard to know. But, you know, a number of years ago, California voters uh, eliminated affirmative action in their uh, college system, in their university system. It had two effects. Fewer black and brown people went to college, and fewer black and brown people were in the, the first-tier universities in the state. So that's UCLA in Los Angeles and Berkeley in Northern, Northern California. So both of those top-tier universities in California, public universities, saw declines in the number of black and brown young people that were attending. And there were fewer people who went to college in the black and brown communities more broadly. I mean, that's just devastating. Um, and so we have a we have a real life model for what happens when you do this, right? Um, in one of the most democratic states in the country. So I, this is not 
This is not good news, and it means those of us who believe in the importance of education for our young people, people like me who spent teach, te yeah. uh, 10 years teaching, um, are going to have to work really hard to, to help all of the young people in our communities that want to go to college pursue a, uh, a degree post-secondary school. Yes, it's, uh, it's, um, it's something that we have to live with. It's hard to digest. And uh, coming to the end of our Dr. VGP talk show, we're featuring this dynamic, visionary, foresighted leader, uh, Tony Preckwinkel. And uh, you have earned the sobriquet as the Iron Woman of America. And you are known, I would call her six champion, six C's, champion of COVID relief. How well you and your team in Cook County reacted, not only about getting out the COVID vaccinations and having the relief efforts, and it was, it was incredible how you sung into action. I want to salute you for being the champion of COVID relief. And of course, the champion of sustainability with your forest, forest preserve reserves, which you have kept them going and how you're preserving them and having them to be more sustainable in a green environment and giving our millions of people opportunities to take nature in at its best. And then you're also, which is proven over and beyond a doubt, I cannot think of any leader in the country as a champion of physical responsibility. She had already described, Madam President has described herself as honesty, integrity, and accountability, which all, but your physical responsibility, how you turned around the, from the Cook County Hospital Healthcare, from being in the red into the black or blue, and making it, that, that is incredible. It's a story which you have made history in 180 years. As usually, politicians all around the world love to spend and spend and keep their governments in deficit. I'm talking about my home country and my home state governments. And even if you look around other states here in the United States, that's always, nobody was able to have a balanced budget and turn it around. And that I would like to salute you. And also, as a champion of economic development, which you have initiated. You are the first president of the Cook County Board to create a Bureau of Economic Development and also champion of criminal justice system. And you have had the juvenile, you had the Justice Advisory Council. Council. JAC. JAC was another creation of yours. It was, it was kind of moribund. It was there, but not doing anything. And so we reactivated it and, and gave them the responsibility for leading our efforts on criminal justice reform and funding community-based organizations that were dealing with at-risk youth or residents who were returning from incarceration or detention. Um, and that entity has been kind of the spear point of our, of our efforts in this arena. And I'm very grateful to Avik Das, who's the president. Yeah present leader of our of our, our uh, Justice Advisory Council. And in the end, as a champion of people in progress. So six champions, I would call you the champion of champion, uh, President Tony Preckwinkel. And what would be your message to the viewers in general? It's all yours, Tony Preckwinkel. I, I am very grateful for the opportunity to be with Dr. Vijay uh, today. Uh, and I would encourage all of our, our viewers to be very involved in uh, the democratic process in this country. We can only have a strong country if if everyone commits not just to voting, but to working for candidates they believe in and contributing to them. Uh, I always say voting is your first responsibility as a citizen. It's necessary, but not sufficient. You have to put time and energy into the campaigns of people who you believe in. And, you know, we've moved into this country in, in an in a era in which you know, very wealthy people hold office. Um, and for those of us who are not very wealthy, we have the opportunity to give our time and what little money we have, but if we gather it all together, it, it amounts to something, uh, to support the candidates that we believe in. And I, I really think that, um, you know, if our democracy is gonna be strong, everyone has to commit to making it strong. It, we can't leave it to other people. So well said. Thank you so much, President Tony Preckwinkle has transformed the largest county in the country and believes in transforming, reforming, and performing. We are indeed, it's our delight to spread your message, spread your word, and the wonderful work. The great thing about President Tony Preckwinkle, she steadfastly and silently does her work. The results are for everyone to see. 
and we don't hear all these positive things what we just heard in our talk show today and we will make sure not only our 42 million viewers but others too thank you so much for joining us president tony Perkins. thank you it's been an enlightening afternoon here with you thank, thank you. you thank you very much dr vijay